So I mean, I th I'm really, I should confess that I was on the advisory panel for the Asia Foundation study, so there's a conflict of interest on that one. Um, but just to say that I find it an incredibly useful report in, in terms of it has very operationally relevant research questions. There's a real attempt to kind of have a rigorous methodology in very difficult contexts. Um, and I think that both kind of balancing those two is, is, is really important. And I think there's some very powerful messages for the development community. So I'm going to just focus on, on two of those and, and ask some questions around that. I, mean, I think the first is, a, is about this whole idea about thinking, working, and acting politically and just how important that is for development agencies. And I think this study is another really important piece of kind of rigorous, well-researched evidence demonstrating the importance of thinking, working, and acting politically. And I think, I mean, I don't know how much this resonates with the audience, but certainly within the development industry, there is still, to this day, is a big debate around what is aid about and there's a real tension between two competing models. One which sees development as a kind of public good which is fairly neutral, and if you provide the right amount of money and technical assistance, you can solve the problem. That's one model which is still very prevalent. And the other which sees it very differently, that development is actually an intensely political process, that there are winners and losers, and that to actually address the underlying causes of conflict or fragility or poverty, aid and the kind of broader external engagement needs to engage at that political level, needs to understand power relations, but not go beyond just understanding it, actually trying to think about how aid programs can leverage change in the best case scenario, but at a minimum make really certain we're not actually doing harm and I think this study reinforces that very well in quite a neutral way, in quite a rigorous way. And it's, a, it's certainly from where I sit, it's a really important piece of, of evidence which helps us, provides ballast to some of those debates that we have as, as development agencies. And I'd be quite interested in Tom reflecting on how this discussion has panned out in you know, the different areas where it's been discussed. I mean, it's, it's important to note that this was actually funded mainly by the World Bank, you know, the, the one agency which has a mandate not to be political. And I think that's quite significant, and it'd be great if Tom could talk about that. Um, I think the other thing is, it may be a slight difference of opinion about the tone of the report. I mean, I think they, they let people off a little bit around this contrast between development outcomes and transformational outcomes. And there's kind of an implicit assumption, and maybe I'm being unfair, that you can kind of do both, and there's a way of negotiating that which keeps everybody happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I took away from this study a much stronger message about you can't have a program which is focused on development outcomes without doing harm, that you have to have a really holistic approach, and that even if you are doing an education program or health program <coughs> or infrastructure, the starting point of the design of that program needs to be your political lens and your understanding of the local politics and the implications of whatever you do for that political dynamic. Because this is what it's all about, right? It's all about those local level, subnational political dynamics and how they link with the national level political dynamics. And if we don't have that link, whatever the program I is doing, there's a real risk we're doing harm. So it might be interesting to see what Tom thinks about that. Um, I mean, another, another issue is, is kind of there are a lot of really fantastic recommendations about what donors should do um, in terms of incentivizing local knowledge, in terms of having peop you know, uh, local staff having a career progression, in terms of keeping people in place for longer. I mean, fantastic set of suggestions. But sitting where I sit, you know, I can kind of understand there are a huge range of institutional blockages to stop that from happening. And so I think they're good aspirational medium-term objectives, but I'm interested in quick ways of trying to address this. Um, you know, what are, you know, given where donors sit, given this massive deficit in local knowledge, how do we find quick ways of addressing that? Um, and my own, you know, one model which is being piloted in the, uh, the DFID program in the Democratic Republic of Congo is where they've actually put in place an expert panel of kind of Congolese experts on national politics, local politics, who have kind of a, a long-term contract 
to provide a challenge function to the DFID DRC program. So they're there to kind of provide that local knowledge and to provide the institutional memory. Because the thing is, is that staff just rotate constantly um, in donor agencies. And so if you have this expert panel in place, there's a, that's one m potential quick win. Be interested in the panel about other ideas from, from the audience on that one. Um, I think the second thing to just flag is, I mean, the real unbelievably stark headline finding about this team, this incredibly skilled team um, of local researchers, more than 100 local researchers who were national researchers with really in-depth local knowledge. When, when we kind of agreed the focus for this program, which was to follow the money and to understand what actually happens to the donor dollar, where does it end up in these local conflict situations? I mean, that was really our burning question. We were incredibly excited about this that when a year later with this incredibly rigorous intensive study with this incredibly talented research team, they weren't able to answer that question. Mm. And I think that's a massive wake up call mm. um, to the donor community about our lack of ability to actually see where the money goes. Um, and there's some reasons for that, but I think one of them is, is really problematic approach of the donors about not taking this stuff seriously. Um, and I think it's a really, it's a really serious question. Um, and again, it'd be interesting to get the panel to comment on that. Then I think the last thing would be just to say from kind of more of an academic -y research perspective, I mean, DFID is really interested in these kind of micro level studies in subnational conflict. And so we've got two large programs, one of which is led by Paul to my right, which is looking at security livelihoods, um, secure livelihoods in conflict, and the other one is being led by LSC, which is looking at justice security in conflict areas. And I'm, from kind of, from an academic perspective around how you grapple with the challenges of doing research in conflict areas, it'd be great to just share some of the things that didn't work um, and some of the things that did work, but thanks.